What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Watch and Cut channel. I know it's been a while since I've done a video, um, but we have an unboxing to do. That means we got a video to make. And this one comes to me from my good buddy, Dirk Warning. So let's check out what's inside the box here. I actually know some of the stuff, but not everything. So let's see what we got. I do know that inside here there is the War Pig. And if you guys follow Dirk's channel, you saw that uh, Ed gifted me a production War Pig. So, hence, I brought out the custom War Pig to open this box here. Dirk's always awesome at packing stuff here. So I know he's got some knives that he wants me to sharpen for him. And then inside, there's my knife. And he also, I think, sent me the, uh, he said the, uh, the prototype for the production war pig, which is kind of cool. So here's the custom. Let's see what's in here. This is a pretty cool little case actually uh, mm -hmm. oh, no. mm -hmm. oh wow Tucson nice a fully aspirated frame it's kind of neat pretty lightweight I like it. What else we got here? Let's see, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Minor sharpening needed. Oh, I have one of these. This is an Orion's Knives. Uh, the name escapes me, I'll have it. I'm overdue actually for reviewing mine. Um, very cool knife very nice action this will be fun to sharpen this will sharpen really quick cool i dig that that's our buddy uh david at the blade banter oh he sent me the kubi so Dirk loves this thing. I've seen this thing on his channel more than a lot of other knives. This is his kind of beater, I guess you could say. And um, I guess it needs some love. Edges aren't actually all that bad on any of these, but I guess we could touch them up. Very cool. Oh. He brought the glow in the dark spider co delica. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I love delicas. Oh yeah, that one needs some love. Very cool. We'll touch all these guys up. I dig this. Now, I know this one from the back of the clip looks like the or the prototype. Now, this one belongs to Dirk. Uh, Ed gave this one over to him. And uh, it's got the black blade. There's the prototype. Nice edge. It's got that compound grind like you get on the custom, which I thought was actually really, really cool. Um, bigger thumb hole, too. That's what she said. <laughs> and then, as you can see, this is a frame lock. This one's kind of more of a bolstered lock, which is neat as well. You guys know I'm a sucker for that. Size-wise, proportion-wise pretty close. I think this is definitely much lighter and more manageable than, you know, this big old hunk and uh, 
pig. <laughs> Hi, boy. Can we touch him? No, don't. <laughs> uh, war pig. So this guy is big and heavy. And yeah, this one, not really, actually. This is pretty lightweight. You can see size-wise, pretty comparable. All right, I dig that. And then this is the one that Ed gifted me. So after whatever happened, process or whatnot, um, this was the final production version, which is cool. I'm going to take this to work tomorrow. And there she is. Oh, yeah, that's got a nice edge on it. Now, this is a satin blade version, which I really, really dig. Um, you're going to hear a muscle car running by right now. You have them spinning tires, do you? You suck! You do! I'm surprised it didn't do a burnout in my neighborhood. That seems to be the thing to do. Ooh, but let's continue here. So you can see the flipper tab has some of the same DNA. Um, the release side here, where it's all polished out, this is what you see more of his mid techs and customs. Um, lock up looks really good. You can see this one's actually milled out for the uh, more narrow space. So actually very easy to uh, disengage this lock, no problem. Uh, this one, same scenario, um, but this one definitely is a little more spacious for my thumb. So I dig that. This one's got a little bit of, it's not lock stick. It's more like the um, lock bar is a little bit extra preloaded. You can hear it when you disengage it. So not really difficult to um, disengage the lock like a lock stick would be. Just kind of makes a groan noise because the lock bar is loaded up so strong. Um, I did do a spine whack test on it. This thing is, it's legit, it's safe. Uh, but just a little characteristic of customs, which is why these productions are cool, because you're not going to get those idiosyncrasies. This is a knife that's run through the process a bunch of times by Ed over, Mr. Ed Kim, over at uh, Red Horse Knife Works. And they've him and the manufacturer, which is overseas, have come up with a final design. And um, even you can see, like, there's subtle differences between the two. And I'm probably going to do a quick uh, comparison video when I get a chance to look at these a little bit closer uh, together. Um, but, yeah, these are all finalized. They've been through the manufacturer and the maker probably through a few prototypes that's usually the case so everything gets finalized everything all the chamfering um, all those problems get or issues get resolved with prototyping uh, phase um, I love this thing feels great in the hand it's got quite the hand guard right there and you still get that cool compound grind which is something you usually find only perhaps on you know, on the, um, wow, this one is 001. This is the first production one. That is freaking cool. Yeah, so <laughs> that's neat. Uh, very cool for my collection. I dig that. Let's see the thumb hole. Oh, yeah. Very nice. This one works really, really nicely. Um, this one is kind of tiny i have a few knives like this so oh. Oh. yeah it's not gonna happen the detent's just too strong um i've done it before a few times there we go <laughs> when you just kind of like do a little bit of a wrist flick but that's to overcome the detent. On this one, you got plenty of space. So I really dig this. This is nice. Carbon fiber, everything looks very nice, high quality. There's no voids. 
everything meets up nicely. You can't really feel the seam here. I like the clip. It just kind of terminates with the rest of the shape of the handle right here. And then this bolstered lock is kind of like a bonus. I think I see these going for like 350 to 385 or something like that on the knife stores. I think, you know, I honestly kind of bitched and complained about the 400 MSRP. I At the time, I thought the MSRP was going to be the, the selling price. I didn't realize it was an SM, MSRP price. So at 350 385 I think it's actually priced right. You get a lot of knife for your money. You get good steel too. You get the S35 VN blade steel. And then you get this nice compound grind for, you know, like cutting down maybe like thinner pieces of material. But then you got this nice robust tip right here. Kind of a clip point with this really kind of neat little rest up at the top here. So this is the production war pig. So big thanks to Dirk for shipping all this cool stuff out to me. I'll get these other guys sharpened up for you. And uh, man, Ed, thank you. I really appreciate the gift of this knife. You did a really good job with this production. Um, I think one of my favorite things is that, that thumb hole. Um, that's pretty cool, actually. It works, well, it works really well both ways. So big thanks to you, Ed. Big thanks to you guys for checking out the video. If you're not subscribed already, make sure you hit the bell icon, subscribe to the channel, leave comments down below. And this is the Watch and Cut channel, out for the evening.